Okay, welcome to the course. Today, hemocompatibility experiment is going to be experimented by myself, Dr. Chitra Aston Professor, Department of Biomaterials, Avita Rental College. Today, we are going to visualize about hemocompatibility. So, before going into detail, we just discuss the glimpse of biocompatibility and importance of this study. So, what is the need to analyze a biocompatibility? Recently, a lot many materials are emerging towards therapeutic as well as diagnostic application and variety of materials are evolving day by day towards the development of medical society. Biocompatibility means the materials which are used for biomedical application should not cause any adverse effect to the living tissue or biological components. Biocompatible materials should not produce any toxic or immunological response when exposed into biological environment. Hence, the material scientist should design and fabricate a compatible material for biomedical applications. Now we move on to hemocompatibility. Hemocompatibility is one of the primary assessment to analyze the biocompatibility properties of the material when in contact with blood cells or blood environment. To analyze the erythrocyte compatibility with nano or micron size particulates, the particulates are exposed into red blood cell corpuscles, corpuscles with the presence of phosphate buffer cell line for appropriate incubation to exactly routinize the rupture rate of red blood corpuscles. So we are going to expose our uh, so we are going to expose particulates in RBC at particular time, then we quantify the rupture rate from that solution. But that means we have to take a quantified particulates in a F and F micro centrifuge tube and sonicate it for 5 to 10 minutes. Then after sonication, we introduce blood sample into that uh, tube. That time, particulates are interact with blood cells that stimulates the rupture rate of RBC membranes. Hence, erythrocyte rupture rate is mainly based on the osmotic pressure of the buffer environment. Generally, lysis of RBCs is mainly with respect to the hypertonicity of phosphate buffer selling. So finally, after the exposure of particulates in erythrocyte erythrocytes, the rupture rate was observed at the wavelength of 540 nanometer because the hemoglobin red color was observed at that particular wavelength. There are mainly five steps for this assessment. First step is blood sample collection from healthy volunteer. Then second step, sample preparation for the assessment. Then third step, exposure of sample to the RBCs. Then after incubation for one hour, then finally reading was captured at uh, 540 nanometer. Uh, we have to collect the blood from healthy volunteer or we can procure from authenticated laboratories. To avoid the coagulation, we used EDTA as an anticoagulant, 1.5 mg EDTA per ml of blood. We have to centrifuge the blood for isolation of RBCs, 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes. Then we have to decan the plasma and white blood cells. We can again wash the blood two to three times with PBS to, pure, uh, to purely collect the RBCs without plasma and WBCs. Now blood sample is prepared, then we have to prepare the nanoparticles. Now I am going to wait. 10 ng of my material to analyze the compatible properties. So we have to tear initially to reduce the weight of this butter sheet. Now my, I am weighing 10 ng of my bioactive sample. So now I wait ng of sample, then I have to collect this bioactive particulates in a micro centrifuge tube. Similarly, I have to prepare three tubes for the triplicates. Similarly, I have to prepare three tubes for the triplicates. Okay, for the assessment, we have to treat test material with blood. So for negative control, I'm taking PBS. 950 mual of PBS in every tube so with the triplicates for negative control uh, RBC alone with the PBS that means complete protection of RBCs without any endurances sorry without any endurances.
Here I have taken bioactive glasses as a test material. Here I have chosen a 10 mg sample, 10 mg per ml. But that you have to optimize based on your requirement. For that, you have to uh, do repeat analysis by trial and error. Then you have to quantify how much concentration of sample is compatible. That you have to quantify and you have to fix the concentration. For positive control, I'm taking DD water, 950 ml of DD water. So this DD water completely ruptured the RBCs. So we have taken this. Uh, ruptured RBCs as a positive control. Now I waved bioactive glasses 10 mg of sample in, in 1 ml of sorry 950 ml of PVS. I am going to sonicate this thing to complete dispersion of particles. Now I am analyzing biocompatibility with bioactive glasses. I have taken uh, 10 mg of sample in 950 ml of PVS. Now I'm going to sonicate this for complete dispersion of particulates. Now the sonication is completed. The particulates are completely dispersed in phosphate buffer saline. Here we have positive control. This is DD water. Then we have negative control. This is phosphate buffer saline. In this, we have uh, dispersed bioactive nanoparticulates in phosphate buffer saline. So this is my positive control. This is my negative control, and this is my test material. Okay. In first step, we have collected the blood sample. Then we process the blood sample. Now the blood sample is prepared. In the second step, we have prepared the bioactive, oh, sorry, we have weighed bioactive nanoparticles and dispersed in BP, we are dispersed using a sonicator. Now the particles is also ready. In the third step, I am going to put 50 mol of RBCs in these tubes. That means in uh, positive, negative as well as test materials. Fifty mol of erythrocytes is exposed into positive control, negative control, as well as with the test material with the triplicates. In this kind of assessments, it may possible for mechanical damage or variations by handling. So, generally we used with the triplicates or n number of tubes, usually we do. Now, uh, we, already we have completely dispersed the particulates in PBS with sonicator. Then we introduced erythrocyte in, uh, to this tube. Now we have to incubate this for one hour. Then we analyze the compatibility of erythrocyte. After one hour incubation, we are going to centrifuge the blood sample for the centrifugation. Now, compatible RBCs are settled down, damaged RBCs turned into red color. Live RBCs are settled down and damaged RBCs are turned into red color. We fix 10,000 RPM for centrifugation in 4 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes. After centrifugation, we are again checking the uh, blood samples. Now, this is positive control. Every, uh, 
each and every rbcs are damaged this is our negative control rbcs are completely settled uh, in a protective way this is with the triplicates and this is a test material treated uh, rbcs here also the material is very compatible to the rbcs compared to positive control a material showed good biocompatible properties with erythrocytes now after incubation we have collected three positives three negatives with three test sample bioactive glasses was used as a test samples now we have to quantify the erythrocyte rupture rate in a uv visible spectrometer at the wavelength of 540 nanometer okay. after this step finally we have to take one uh, we have to take the solution and analyze the absorbance that means optical density in uv visible spectrophotometer at 540 nanometer that will give the reading of the solution the absorbance that will give the absorp absorption of the solution with that we have to plot a graph hemolysis reverses test concentration with that formula we have to analyze the results the formula is oda of the test material minus negative control divided by positive control minus negative control into 100 this is the formula uh, for the quantification of rbc rupture rate with this formula we can develop a graph we can plot a graph hemolysis versus material concentration in your x axis you will get a hemolysis percentage sorry in your y axis you will get hemolysis percentage and in your x axis you will get concentration of material or the material which you are used after incubation after centrifugation now we are going to analyze the optical density of the solution with the help of a photospectrometer uv visible photospectrometer to quantify the optical optical density value of the solution this is q wet initially we was the we wash this cuvette with double distilled water. Then we have to then we have to include test test specimens or test solutions. So, so now I have taken my test solution in the cuvette and going to analyze the absorbance of the solution with the help of UV visible spectrophotometer. Then we quantify the solution absorptions in this display. Then with this absorbance value, we can we can plot a graph. In your y-axis, you will get percentage of hemolysis. In your x-axis, you may get sample concentrations or variables in the test specimen. With this assessment, we have analyzed the compatible properties of bioactive materials, specifically uh, bioactive glasses compatibility in erythrocytes. After all these steps, now we come to the end. With this assessment, we can analyze the biocompatible properties of our material, specifically I quantified erythrocyte rupture rate with the presence of copper bioactive glasses. Okay, usually we uh, follow ASTM and ISO standards. In case of ASTM standard, F2888 uh, standard we follow. Similarly, in case of ISO 10993 standards, we usually follow to compare our results. Generally, as per ASTM standard, 5% lysis is compatible. Below 2% is slightly hemolytic. 5% is hemolytic, beyond 5% is highly hemolytic. So, a material should express compatibility below 5% rate, then only it is acceptable for biomedical applications. With this study, I have analyzed the erythrocyte compatibility rate of bioactive glasses. Thank you.